Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to Training Leaders for a Better Future. I started this organization a few months back with the intention of bringing total change in the world. The world needs change and so do we. The change in ourselves and in our personal lives needs to happen simultaneously with the change outside. That's the fastest way to grow and bring change everywhere. I started all of this as a simple concept of ending poverty is as easy as building a pipeline and leveling the playing field. And now over time, it has evolved into training leaders, meaning teach people how to lead their people, their countries, train the next up and coming leaders who are going to lead mankind, prepare them for a great responsibility. They're not going to be some ordinary leaders. They're going to be world changing, extraordinary leaders who only want the best for mankind. They are the movers and shakers of society, moving with the help of Allah Almighty, the forerunners, the chaos that you see, the killings, the murders, wars, poverty, and whatnot is the cause of our own human behavior. How we react to situations. When something bad is happening, what do we do? Do we just sit back and watch? Or, or do we become active in bringing change, meeting the right people and developing unity with them and working as a team, inshallah, we can end some very huge problems that mankind is facing on a daily basis. There are four biggest problems that we must solve. Lack of spirituality is the number one problem and cause of injustice everywhere around the world. Bring people back to God back to the path of righteousness and injustice will end everywhere. Later on, we are going to talk about a prophecy in Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12. So stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss that. People not believing in the existence of one true God or believing in multiple gods at the same time who can neither benefit nor harm them is what separated the hearts of all of humanity from each other. We no longer feel the pain of others' suffering. Instead, some people even rejoice when others are inflicted with hardships. And if any good comes to them by the mercy of Allah, the jealousy and hatred takes over them. It's time to correct our beliefs. We can no longer remain ignorant of the facts. The truth must be spoken and out loud without fear of reprisals. We are going to bring some serious change in humanity by the will of Allah. He is the one true God who deserves to be worshipped and loved and people brought back to. Love all of humanity, no matter what religion or race they are from. Everybody has the right to choose and make their own decisions. Our job is just to guide and impart knowledge that otherwise you or they might not know. And everything has a solution. No problem descend upon the earth without the solution descending with it. So this is the time to believe. And second most important area is taking care of our health and well-being. If we don't take care of our own bodies and keep it pure, clean and healthy, we will not be able to perform at our best. Our spirituality, our finances, our relationships, they all will suffer as a result. Lack of energy, lack of mental focus, lack of confidence, lack of money, lack of resources. You start to lose a lot of things when you don't take care of yourselves. The way Allah Almighty told you. Think what you're putting into your bellies, into your stomachs. What are you filling yourselves up with? People are dying from hunger and starvation all over the world. They're living in extreme poverty. We as a team can end world hunger. Once and for all, there are solutions if you're willing to follow. Lack of money or hoarding wealth is the third largest problem in the world. People kill for money. The power, the greed is never ending. Adversity is only good for you if it brings you closer to Allah. And adversity is bad for you if it's taking you away from the righteous path and away from Allah. People sell drugs or even themselves or their kids even for the lack of money. They start gambling, borrowing loans, piling up debt after debt, living miserable lives. Is that why God created us? 
Same thing goes for wealth. It's bad for you if you're using it to persecute others or inflict harm on others and if it's taking you away from God Almighty's path. And wealth is good for you if, you, if you're going to use it to benefit others and fulfill the needs of people. Paying off debts once and for all, your own personal debts and even the debts of your country. There's a lot of work to be done here and we need to move quick. Last but not least, the fourth biggest problem in the world is our relationships with each other. How do we treat one another? Our family, our family and friends, our wives and children, our uncles and aunts, the relationship between brothers and sisters. How is it all? Are we always fighting amongst ourselves or do we have love for each other? No more family feuds or dramas, no yelling, no screaming, no fighting amongst family members. That's not why God created us. We are much better than that. This organization will work on all four areas at the same time, not one by one. There's no more time to delay. We cannot take forever and be lazy in bringing change. I'm looking to develop 12 teams as soon as possible and grow these teams to hundreds and thousands of people. We need to show people through our actions how to be spiritual, how to be healthy and wealthy and have good relationships with each other at the same time. That's the way to live a balanced life. This is going to be the best change mankind will ever see, inshallah, by the help of Allah. Now I'm also going to start off with Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12 that I talked about to get the ball rolling in the right direction. There's a lot of confusion concerning these verses. Even the best Christian scholars can't explain it away. I will show you where the confusion is and who created the confusion. And let me tell you, it's not God because God is not the author of confusion. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. However, these verses are one of the best verses to bring everybody on the same page. This vision that we're going to talk about is being shown to Prophet Isaiah like a movie playing in the theater. But to us, they're actual words written in a book that we have to read to understand. So Prophet Isaiah is in the Old Testament, which is just the Torah and Psalms. The New Testament, which is the Gospel and the Quran, they have not been revealed yet. Jesus, Hazrat Isa and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him are still yet to come. They haven't come yet. So still let's see how they all perfectly fit into, into these two verses. Also at this period in time, Gospel and Quran, both books were sealed up in Lohi Mahfuz, which is called the preserved tablet in English. It's mentioned in the Quran, chapter 85, verse 22. If you research it, this tablet contains everything that has already happened all the way to what will happen. Past, present, and future, every single detail is written in it, including the original Torah, the original Psalms, the original Gospel, and the original Quran. Nothing is left out from this tablet. It was the second creation of God Almighty, and the first creation was the pen itself. It's mentioned in Tirmidhi, Abu Dawud, and Ahmad. And the first commandment was given to the pen to start writing everything that is in knowledge of God Almighty. So now, pay close, close attention to the verse that I'm going to read. If it's, if it's better, take out your Bibles and read with me. I'm going to make this very interesting for you guys. And like a puzzle, we're going to figure this out together. And I'm going to read two translations. In one of the translations, it starts off by saying, The entire vision of all these things will be to you like the words of a book that is sealed. If it is handed to someone who is literate, saying, read this, he will say, I cannot, because it is sealed. And in a different translation, this, this line reads, when they deliver it to the one who is literate. So right away, this tra the translation of this line right here makes a big difference. Because three things scholars can't even agree on. First, whether it's an if or a when. Second, they don't know who they is, whether it's men or an angel, the Holy Spirit. 
and they don't know if it's just someone meaning just any illiterate any literate person off the street or the one who is someone special we have to find out and what fits perfectly in these verses so where it says book or scroll put new testament or gospel on the first try and second try put quran and where it says someone or the one put jesus peace be upon him and then later put prophet muhammad peace be upon him to name and where it says they put men first and then put angel or holy spirit we're going to we're going to find out the truth together now once we have done that now read it back both ways which book and names make sense in these verses i will read them with you too both ways first let's let's do the first try the entire vision of all these things will be to you like the words of gospel that is sealed when men deliver it to Jesus who is literate saying read this he will say i cannot because it is sealed this combination right here makes no sense men delivering it to Jesus is totally out the window and gospel was not sealed to Jesus now second try the entire vision of all these things will be to you like the words of quran that is sealed when holy spirit delivers to jesus who is literate saying read this he says i cannot because it is sealed this right here makes perfect sense because the knowledge of the quran was given to jesus peace be upon him in fact all the prophets knew about the last and the final final revelation and who and who is the person that's going to receive it but they weren't chosen to spread the message they had to remain quiet and silent it wasn't their job and jesus himself said i have many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now at this point in time when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth as john 16 verse 12 these were the things jesus wanted to say but he wasn't allowed to say people weren't ready for the whole truth so angel gabriel or holy spirit did deliver the knowledge to jesus and jesus was literate as mentioned in luke 4:16 and next the verse goes then the book is delivered to the one who is illiterate saying read this and he says i cannot read this one is easy because then the quran is delivered to prophet muhammad peace be upon him who is illiterate saying read this and he says i cannot read the seal was now finally open to prophet muhammad peace be upon him to spread the message now now let's read it one more time all together The entire vision of all these things will be to you like the words of Quran that is sealed. When Holy Spirit angel Gabriel delivered to Jesus who is literate saying read this he says I cannot because it is sealed. Then the Quran is delivered to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him who is illiterate saying read this and he says I cannot read. This is 100% accurate. And this vision continues till verse 24. Keep reading and understanding. Make Quran a daily part of your life. You don't know what you might learn. We are here to bring change and connect with like-minded people. Subscribe and follow my organization on all platforms. The link will be in the description. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.